Welcome back to another video of my Botango and Draw It video series. This time we're going to look at uh, migrating everything we did so far with an Arduino onto an ESP32 development board. There are many reasons why such a um, change of board might be of interest. Uh, one is uh, the amount of uh, servers or effectors that you can connect. So the regular Arduino boards are limited by eight, let's stay in this example, servos. Um, and if you have more, you can change the maximum value in Botango, but the developer clearly states that operating more servos might be a bit of an overkill to the processor of the Arduino. Uh, with an ESP32 you can go much higher. I honestly don't know where the maximum number of servos is but it's definitely higher than 8 and um, higher than 16. So this could be one good reason to migrate off from the Arduino to an ESP32. And another good reason might be the sheer build size. And if we look at the pit droid that I'm using as the example, unless you're adding a large backpack to it, the volume in which you can put the uh, hardware in his chest is rather limited. And uh, sheer the size comparison of the Arduino compared to the ESP32 might make it a really good reason to uh, switch over from hardware. So what we will do in this video is um, step by step build up the ESP32 to cover those functionalities that we've so far in the other videos covered with an Arduino. That means connecting the uh, Adafruit servo driver board to manipulate servos, then adding LED uh, smart light strips, and last but not least, adding sounds. So without any further ado, let's get into it and let's take a look at the wiring that is needed to connect an ESP32 with the Adafruit servo driver. Connecting the Adafruit servo driver board, the PCA9685, is uh, again a straightforward thing. We definitely still need the 5 volt uh, power supply that is mainly used to power up the servos and then connect it to the ESP. As a small difference to the wiring that we used in the prior videos, um, I decided this time to just connect the VCC and V plus pins from the servo driver directly. This will cause the driver to get the power also from the external power supply instead of connecting directly again uh, V plus with the 5 volt power supply. It makes it just a little bit more easy but it's not really a, a big thing. Let's go through the wires step by step. The ESP32 gets its power from also from the 5 uh, volt power supply. Um, the pin that you need to connect it is either labeled as V in like on the screen or at some boards it's uh, labeled as 5 volts ground of the ESP32 needs to be connected to ground of our power supply as well. And then uh, for the logic to be transmitted from the ESP to the servo driver board, you need to connect D21 of the ESP board with the SDA pin and D22 gets connected to SCL. And then obviously ground of the servo driver board needs also be connected to our power supply ground. 
And that's all that you need to do to wire up the uh, servo driver. In Botango itself, there is no need to change anything. So if your current setup is only working with the uh, servos, then you're already good to go. Adding the VS2812 LED strips to the ESP is uh, also again really simple and straightforward. You connect the plus 5 volt and ground connection of the LED strip to your power supplies 5 volt and ground line and the signal wire that's usually the middle one here called D in you connect to pin D15 of the ESP32 board. And that's also the only thing we need to change in the Botango source cord. In our Arduino setup, if I remember correctly, we used pin 7 for the LED strips. And uh, yeah, there is no D7 on the board. So I decided just to use D15. And uh, this also needs to be reflected in the source cord. And if you apply these changes, then uh, you're also ready to go with the LEDs in your Botango model. Last but not least, we have to connect the DF Player Mini to our ESP32. Here again, let's start with uh, power supply, very simple. Um, power, 5 volt goes to 5 volt, ground goes to ground. Um, the speaker gets connected left and right of the ground pin that we were using and uh, RX and TX of the DF player mini will get connected with D27 and D26 of the ESP32. For the DF player to work with our ESP we also have to do source code changes in Botango. These are a tiny little bit more complicated than the ones for the LED strip, but uh, they should still not pose any big problem if you follow my instructions. The first thing we need to do is right at the top of the Botango Arduino callbacks.cpp file, where we have to change the definitions of DX player RX and DF player TX to reflect the pins that we are using to connect RX and TX of the DX player. Then we have to change the FP serial definition to not be soft serial anymore, but serial one. So you can either comment out the two lines starting with software serial and hashtag define FP serial, or uh, you can just delete them. The other tiny source code change you have to do is further down in the same file within the function on effector registered, where you have to change the FP serial dot begin as it is shown here in the picture. But uh, don't worry, I will, like I did in the first video on the DF player, put the link to this source code fragments into the description of this video. So when you apply these changes, uh, compiled and uploaded the code on your ESP32, you should be all good to go. This concludes this video and I hope it was helpful for you. If it was, I would greatly appreciate a thumbs up just as feedback for me and the work that I'm putting in in creating these videos. And if you don't want to miss any new releases, please also hit subscribe. I have no intention of making money out of these videos. If for whatever reason they should still get monetized, all profits that I will make out of these videos will be donated to an official charity organization. See you at the next video.